Hey everyone, welcome back to the garden. And today it's an exciting day here. Maybe not for Max, but for me at least anyway, because we're waking up the Gunra Manicata, the giant rhubarb. If you don't know about the plant, it's absolutely incredible. It's probably the plant you can grow that's got the biggest leaves here in the UK, and it's got an amazing sort of prehistoric vibe to it. Back in 2019, I had a few small divisions. I grew them on in pots for a year, and when we moved here in August 2020, they went into the ground. They sized up really well, and last year, they definitely gave me the biggest leaves I've got here in the garden, which is saying something, because I grow all kinds of big leaf plants. This year, I'm really excited to see just how big they can get, and that all starts here today, because I'm unwrapping them. So let's get on with it. Despite coming from Brazil then, Gunra Manicata, they're not a truly tropical plant, and they don't need a huge amount of heat to really start growing. In fact, here in my exotic garden in North Lincolnshire, they're one of the first real big leaf plants to actually start moving. It's an exciting time of year, but it's also a time that's tinged a little bit with risk. Because of that new growth, those fresh new leaves, they don't like frost. The frost can really brown them off. So at this time of year, as you'll probably know, March, April, early May, it's quite tricky really, because we've got some really warm days, and then we've also got potential for cold nights, sharp frosts, Frosts that won't kill a plant necessarily, but ones that can really cut it back and damage that new growth. And as I mentioned in a few videos about Gunra Manicata, if you can protect those first leaves from what I've heard, and well, my own sort of experience proves it, those first leaves that come out of the Gunra are the ones with the potential to grow the biggest. So it's worth putting a bit of extra care in. Now, I did a video a few weeks back, looking at all kinds of different tropical style plants, some early spring care, how I get them into growth, and things that you can do in spring to give the best summer growth possible. And with the Gunra Manicata, I said the crucial thing is, don't get it started too early, try to protect it as long as you can, because once those leaves start unfurling, they get massive really quickly, and they're very tricky to protect. So what's changed then? There's two crucial factors then. Firstly, the weather's been a lot more mild recently, as I suppose it should be now we're in spring. Things have started to warm up slightly, everything in the garden is slowly starting to move, and that gun rut is definitely leading the charge. Those leaves are pushing up through, so now I've got a position where those leaves are opening up. I don't want the old leaves that I used to cover the crown to actually rip those leaves or deform them, so it's going to have to come off. It's growing now whether I like it or not. And secondly, Sunday night, last night as I'm filming this, it was one of the coldest nights we've had in a while, only down to minus one, so nothing ridiculous, but that sort of temperature is enough for a really hard frost. Luckily, we didn't get a hard frost. Instead, it was a very cold, sort of misty morning. But either way, for the next two weeks in the weather app, there hopefully isn't a hard frost forecast. And when I say hard frost, anything that's under sort of three or two degrees, that's got the potential to be a proper white frost and really nip at that new growth. So hopefully then, the gunner is growing and there won't be any frost, but today I'm about to take the risk, get those crowns uncovered. Whether you grow gunner in your garden or not, I thought it'd be really great in a video to show you just what it starts from at this time of year, because then you appreciate the transformation, how fast it grows to put up those absolutely colossal leaves in summer. It really is incredible to see. So the gunner is right behind me now. What I'm gonna do, take those leaves off the crown so you can really see what it looks like. And then I'm gonna go for a few tips on how we can get the biggest leaves possible in your garden not just for Gunnera, but for all big-leaved exotics. Canners, bananas, tetrapanax. There's a few crucial care tips that you can use to really get the most out of them and the most impressive leaves this summer. But anyway, let's get on with uncovering the Gunnera. I mean, a little bit careful where I stand then because there's all kinds of persicari and other bulbs just waiting to come up under this soil. Max has come out to say hello again. Hello. So this is the Gunnera, and as you can see, it's not completely covered by these leaves. And that's because Storm Eunice absolutely ripped through the garden. It blew a lot of them away. So recently, when we've had the frosty nights, I've been covering it with some fleece. But as you can see, these green leaves are pushing through. They want to be out. So today, we're going to make that happen. This is the biggest one that I grow, but the others, they're not far behind, to be fair. So it's only a matter of time before they get big. And this one, well, we'll see just how big it gets this year. So what we're going to do, come on, Max. What is it? What is it? What is it? You can see Max is excited as well. It's a gunner, Max. Personally, I don't think Max is that excited. What is it? What is it? To be fair, I probably shouldn't get him too excited about my plants. I'm sure that'll backfire. So as you can see, these old leaves now, they're brown, they're crispy. They won't last much longer out here, but they've served the purpose. All I do to protect this, I think really whatever, whatever sort of cold temperatures we see in a normal winter, just putting the old leaves on the top is all you need to do. And as you can see there, a healthy crown. And to be honest, the first thing that's really struck me is just how big it is. This has grown pretty massively since I put it in. 
It was only around that size, I think, when I first put it out. And now it's definitely probably five or six times that size, certainly across these sort of stems anyway. The actual size of it, if I had to say, is probably about twice the size of a rugby ball. So it's big and it's gonna put some really big leaves out this year. So what I'm doing, just tidying these leaves from around it, getting everything out of the way. And as you can see there, we've got another small division coming through. So I probably won't divide that this year, but next year, that's be coming off. I've got a few friends that are definitely keen to have one of these in the garden, so that'll be going off to them. So let me just grab the camera, I'll show you this a little bit more closely and point out the crown, the new leaves, and what exactly is gonna happen this year. <gasps> Who's there? Just looking around for next door's dogs. So this is the gunner then, that's the crown. And as you can see, it's quite a large beast now. It's got these two small offsets at the base, that one there, then that one there. I won't be removing them, like I said, this year because I don't want to risk actually disturbing this main crown, but it's good to know that they're there, they're ready to go now. And to be fair, those will actually send out some pretty big leaves themselves this year. But looking closer at it, as you can see, it's got this sort of weird feathery coat into it. Those leaves, I guess they help protect it in a way, but to me, it's all about these big leaves here. The crown looks funky enough, and you can see what I mean when I talk about it being an alien egg. It really is a weird looking thing. And these leaves just erupt from the top of it. So it's incredible just to see, you'll watch over the next few months, just how big these leaves can get. In my garden last year, they got to maybe six, seven foot across. So I'm excited to see something even bigger than that this year. And pretty much all I'll do today is basically just take off these little bits. As you can see, the old, the old leaf stalks are a bit mushy. Those, it doesn't matter, they'll just rot away. I'm not going to pull them off and risk any damage, but if they're loose, I'll make them go. I'll give you a live unveiling of the second plant. I think unboxing videos are weird, and this is probably even weirder, but here we go. So as you can see, those leaves, chuck those off the top. This plant was a division from that other first plant you saw a couple of years back, so it's really grown well. And as you can see there, we've got one very healthy crown as you can see there, green leaves they've been protected from the frost and there is that crown they really are a weird looking thing aren't they i've just come to unwrap gunner number three with its clasping hand like leaves and look here we've got another little friend just hidden just behind that leaf there who also likes damp shady conditions it's a little frog so i'm just going to leave this little guy to it I actually built a small wildlife pond just a few meters away. So it's great to know that just less than a year later, it's already bringing lovely creatures like this to the garden. Just to answer a couple of gunner specific questions then, because believe it or not, it's one of the plants I get asked about most on Instagram, on Facebook. As I stand here, I should say, there's quite a strong smell in the air and it's my fritillaria bulbs pushing through. They're growing strongly now and the smell is definitely a bit intense, if you know what I mean. But anyway, it's not a completely bad smell. I don't actually mind it myself, but gunner, First, the question I get asked quite a bit, I bought a young plant or a small plant, when is it time to plant it out? To be honest with you, if you've got a young plant, I would want to keep it frost free and only plant it out after the frosts have finished for your area. And that's because unlike these bigger plants, these plants have already got an established base to them. So even if those new leaves get frosted, the temperatures now are unlikely to actually damage the heart of the plant, it will survive. But the smaller plants that are only just made up of small, young, tender leaves, a hard frost at best will really set them back. So ideally, you want to keep them probably inside, not really in direct sun, it's a bit tricky this, inside, maybe in an unheated greenhouse or polytunnel, or at least somewhere sheltered close to the house, away from frosty areas, away from strong winds, and they'll do just fine there. Then you can plant them out after the last frost of your area. So that might be mid-April if you live right on the south coast, it might be early May, hopefully early May for us all, but realistically, it could be mid to late May. I know last year it was even frost in June, but I'm not even gonna mention that again. I'm not gonna tempt fate. We'll say somewhere around early to mid May is the best time to plant them out. And don't worry if you're new to growing these kind of tropical plants, that still leaves a lot of tropical season for them to grow. And plants really do grow well over the summers here. But anyway, the next question about Gunner Manicata that I get quite a bit, how do you feed it? Well, what I'll be doing with that plant now is actually putting some manure around the base of it. Gunneras and all big, well, any sort of big leaf plant really, they need a lot of nutrients and a lot of water. So putting a mulch of manure around the base of them, it really helps both of those. It gives nutrients to the plant, it stops other plants competing quite as much with it, and it also helps trap that moisture in. So long term, doing that is a lot better than just pouring loads of fertilizer on. It'll help you help improve the soil, keep the moisture inside, keep the weeds away, everyone's a winner, and your gunner will certainly love it. 
Another question could be, do I need to uncover my gunnery now? And the answer is no. Like a lot of the advice I give in this channel, I try to give advice that goes straight down the middle that helps a lot of people. I understand that some people won't use as much protection as I do, other people in colder areas might need to do more. So I try to cover all bases, help as many people as possible. I know one plant in particular, the Musa Baju, that's a plant that here this past winter I haven't really protected it. I've just put fleece on top on the coldest nights we've had. But then you go on Facebook, you see people that I don't ever protect it, never protected mine, blah, blah, blah. That's fine, but in some areas it might be colder. You might need to full on wrap the whole plant up in a big protection cover filled with straw and do all that. So here I do something straight down the middle. So my gunnery, again, I'm right down the middle. If you live in the south coast, your gunnery's probably been romping away now for a few weeks. Those leaves are already sizing up quickly, and that's fine because now you're probably likely to not have another hard frost this season. But if you live further up north, your gunnery might not have started growing yet, and you might be liable to have even more hard frost over the next month, six weeks or so. So at that point there, I would leave it covered for as long as possible. So that's the Gunnery Manicata uncovered then. I've just taken Max for a walk. It probably looks a bit darker than it is in this picture. But anyway, three tips then for massive leaves from your Gunnery Manicata, Tetrapanax, Ricinus, whatever the big leaf plant you're growing, all these tips will really help you. So firstly, I've already talked about improving the compost, the soil itself with organic matter. Adding that soil conditioner, the farmyard manure, anything like that, it really helps. You improve the soil with more nutrients, you help a lot the moisture in, and over time, the structure of that soil improves as well, so the plants can get the roots deeper down. So that's fantastic. But with all these big leaf plants, they're very greedy. And the more feed you can give them, the faster they'll grow, the taller they'll get, and the bigger the leaves will get. Gunner Manicata is one of the greediest of the lot. So what I do is, at this time of year, I'll put the manure around as a mulch. And then in another month, I'll sprinkle those chicken manure pellets around it and I'll keep topping those up every six weeks or so over summer. But on top of that, I'll keep putting liquid seaweed, anything like that. I don't get too strong with it, but I find that doing it every couple of weeks, it really helps perk it up. Like I said, I'm not too sort of organized when it comes to feeding, but with Gunner Manicata, especially if your soil isn't quite as rich as it is here naturally, it really is worth giving them some extra feed. They'll definitely thank you for it. And the second tip is water. Watering is absolutely crucial for any big leaf plant. The bigger a plant's leaves are, the more moisture it can lose every single day, especially when the sun's out in summer, and also the more moisture it actually takes to make in the first place. So the more water that you can give these plants, the better. Now, Rhysus and Tetrapanax don't like sitting in water as such, but Gunner and Manicata, they will absolutely love it. On the edge of a pond, edge of a lake, or somewhere where it's very muddy, they'll absolutely love it in summer especially. Here in the garden, it's normal garden soil, so things do get a bit dry during the summer months, so I have to pour that water on. If you've got a water-wise garden, I know that's the thing now, then Gunner Manicata is unfortunately not the plant for you. It's a plant that needs a huge amount of water. So if you can choose the best place for it possible in your garden, choose somewhere with a bit of shade, a bit of shelter, the spot that definitely stays the wettest in summer, that will be the best spot for your gunnery. And if you want to grow it in a container or a raised bed, you've really got some work on your hands. It's going to need a lot of watering pretty much every single day in summer, especially when it's hot. And the final tip for these amazing plants, give them enough space to really unfurl, stretch out those giant leaves. Yes, here in the garden, I've got quite a packed, dense jungle effect. I do have a lot of plants going around the gunneras, but the ones that are immediately around the crowns, I tend to keep them small. I tend to go for hostas, other plants that enjoy the same shady, damp conditions. If you give your plant plenty of space around it, you reduce the competition, you give it all the moisture it can do, and also when those huge leaves start to unfurl, they won't crush the plants around them, which is certainly a bit of an issue here. So obviously when a gunner fully opens, it takes up maybe even five or six meters wide, you're never gonna leave a space that big in your garden. But it's about not cramping them into a spot that's not right for them. If you want the biggest plant possible, you need to give it the space to really do its thing. You wouldn't plant a tree, you know, right next to your front door and expect it to not just suddenly grow up and take over the place. And it's the same with gunnery. You need to give it the space. Each of those leaves can get to well over a meter and a half across on stalks, again, probably a meter long. So just imagine the wingspan of that beast and then just think about where you're putting it. If you're growing a big leaf plant, you need to give it somewhere where you can really appreciate the reason why you're growing it in the first place. That's not to say that I don't cram things in here. My tetrapanax especially, I've got pretty much a small forest of them down that side of the garden. But still, I planted them somewhere where they can grow up and create that dense canopy. And I'm really excited to see that. But I guess what I'm really saying is for the third point, be a bit considerate and thoughtful with where you're planting it. 
It's not a plant that you grow as pure foliage interest over a small area. This is a plant that wants to be a giant. So you really need to give it the space to let it do that. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. Bit of a rambling one, but I'm excited to bring you more videos soon about amazing tropical plants I grew last year and some of the new ones that I'm trying this year. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.